Hello, in this lecture we'll continue on chapter 23 and discuss standard costs. So standard costs are going to be a standard budgetary cost that we're going to use per unit in the flexible budget process. So it's going to be based on careful predetermined amounts. We're going to have to spend a good amount of time to come up with the standard cost because they need to be as accurate as possible for us to have accurate uh, budget information. Used for planning materials, labor, and overhead. So the items in the production process will generally be the materials that we're going to use, the labor and the overhead. So we're going to come up with per unit pre-planned costs for those. The expected level of performance and benchmarks for measuring performance. So it's going to be, these will be the benchmarks that we're going to use. The standard costs are our budgetary costs. You can kind of think of those as our budgetary costs. That will be the standard on which we expect the performance to be compared to. Identify standard cost. Managerial accounting, engineer, personal administrators, and other manager combine their efforts to set standard costs. So standard cost is going to be a, a whole production of different departments if it's done well, because it's very important to have the correct standard costs within the budget process. So we can't usually just take the last month's standard costs and try to divide it out and make one number. We really want to get the input from all the components that will be involved in it, which could include the engineer, the product manager, the human resources, and the managerial accountant in order to come up with the correct standard cost. So we want to get together and, and talk to the people within production. Obviously, the managerial accountant and the accountant department may not have uh, the, the knowledge on what types of material we should have or how expensive the material will be or what kind of costs will be coming up next month that weren't here last month that could cost uh, more in terms of material or labor or certain types of problems. Practical standards should be set at all levels that are currently attainable with reasonable and efficient effort. So there's an idea of setting ideal standards and achievable standards. And of course, the classic um, thought of an accountant sitting next to someone and with a stopwatch and seeing how, mu how much time it takes to produce a widget and then applying that to uh, the entire widget production would not be completely predictable because obviously if we have a stopwatch for one person doing one activity and we just apply that out to an eight hour day let's say then we're not accounting for breaks we're not accounting for downtime we're not accounting for uh, a lot of things that are in inevitable to happen so there's nothing wrong with doing a unit uh, calculation and seeing how much time it takes to do something but we do, if we set an ideal standard, then people are never going to reach it. And that can be demoralizing. It could be, uh, you know, something that is not good for morale. Therefore, what we want to do is t take that perfect estimate, that ideal, and then somehow calculate into it the facts of life so that we can have more attainable standards. So ideal standards that are based on perfection are unattainable and discouraging to most employees. All right, so setting standard costs. So if we talk about, we have our direct materials, our direct labor, and our variable overhead. And if we talk about direct materials, there's two components to it. There's the pricing standard, and there's the quantity standard. So if there's a variance in the materials that we are using, then the question then becomes, well, is it a price thing? Did we pay too much for the material? Or is it a quantity thing? Did we uh, not use the material efficiently? And therefore, when we set the standards, we need to break those two things out. How much should it cost per unit and how much are we going to use? After we uh, complete the process, then we're going to compare the actual, how much did we actually pay per unit and how much did we actually use in the process? Same for the labor, for the most part. We have a rate and we have uh, the standard time. And, and of course, notice that again, we're going to use kind of an average. We might have different people making different uh, amounts within the production process. But we're going to have to come up with some standard what we expect the rate to be so that we can compare it with the actual how much do we pay per hour in this case versus the standard time. How many hours does it take to make something? So if we were over in terms of wages, then the question is, well, why? Is it because the rates are higher than we expected or is it because it's taking more time to produce than we thought? And of course, it could go the other way, too. We could have done better. And then, of course, the question would be why are we doing better? Is it because the rate is less or is it because people are working more efficiently? And then we have the variable overhead, which we're gonna have a, a rate standard as well that we're gonna apply the rate standard and the activity standard.
Setting standard costs, the standard cost of direct materials, direct labor, and overhead for one bat manufactured by ProBat are shown below. So this is called the standard cost card. So we've got the direct materials. So we have the wood, we have the standard quantity, one, and we have the standard cost per unit, 25 uh, cost per unit, and that would give us in dollars total standard cost. And then if we took a look at the direct labor, we've got the two in units, and then that we're going to multiply that times the $20, and that would give us the standard cost. And then we've got the overhead, and we got two, and we're going to base that on labor hours. That's what we're using to apply the overhead, and we're going to have $10 per hour, which will give us the 20 and so we're looking at 85 in this case. These standard cost amounts are then used to prepare manufacturing budget for budget level production. So then, now that we have these standard costs, if the production level changes, then we could uh, then vary the costs to change with the production level. So cost variance analysis. Um, a standard cost variance is the amount by which an actual cost differs from the standard cost. So here's just a graphic illustration of this. So if we have the direct materials, the direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead, and these purple lines are the standard, then if we take a look at this one, and this is the actual, this variance is unfavorable because the actual cost exceeds the standard cost. So we say that is an unfavorable. This one actually met the standard exactly. That almost never happens, but this un this uh, variance is favorable because the actual cost is less. So, of course, if we're talking about costs, we want them to be less. Well, less would be better. All right, so cost variance analysis. So what's going to happen in our analysis? Of course, we're going to prepare the analysis involving preparing a standard cost performance report and comparing actual cost to standard cost. So once we run this, we're going to do a comparison analysis, and we're going to try to break down in detail in terms of exactly where the variances are at. Once we do that, then we then investigate variances by asking for explanations and possible cause for the variances. So we're going to analyze it. Then we're going to go to the relevant department and say, well, if it costs more in terms of material, why is that? If it costs more in terms of labor, uh, what happened for that? Is it because we paid more than we thought or is it because we're being more or less efficient in, in the process? And again, e even the favorable variances, we will go back and check that as well. If we have significant difference in the favorable differences, then we need to tighten up our, our budgeting and plan for better performance in the future. So we should um, correct problems that cause unfavorable variants and possibly adopt and renew the pra uh, practices that resulted in favorable.